Hey, what's up? My name's JJ Zanetta, and I'm going to show you how to use Morfolio Trace to create concept sketches for your urban design projects. First, a quick blurb about my practice. I am an architectural illustrator, and as an illustrator, it's my job to help my clients visualize their ideas and communicate their designs. I used to draw with pen and paper and watercolor with real brushes and real paints, but now I use different hardwares and softwares out there to accomplish a similar look. The technology gives me more flexibility and efficiency to help meet my clients' needs without interfering with my creative process. Apps like Morfolio Trace can really help diminish that barrier between technology and your analog skills so that it actually makes it easier than ever and more accessible to practice those skills. You can practice anywhere. You're not tied to a drawing table. I mean, these iPads are good to go. You can take them wherever you want. In this video, I'm going to show you how I go from rough site plan to basic massing model to using Morfolio Trace to create a concept sketch. So here's our site plan. I'm going to bring that into SketchUp and scale that down to uh, tr its true scale, one to one. And I'm going to trace the outlines of the buildings and start to extrude them, uh, push pull them up 16 feet for the first floor and 10 and 10 above. And I just do that for the entire site. All right, before you start drawing, it's important to ask what the purpose of the drawing is. Is it a quick sketch or does your task require a more detailed drawing? In whatever the case, you just want to make sure that you allocate the correct amount of time that the drawing demands. Once we have our SketchUp imported into Trace, we're going to start our preliminary drawing. And the prelim is very important. It's the drawing where you are figuring everything out. And in some cases, it's more important than the final drawing. Um, and I'm going to use a red pencil here. The red just will contrast well with the black pen line that we're going to use in the final drawing. So when we go to layer everything, that there's no confusion of what is prelim and what is uh, our final line drawing. And you could see that I'm starting with the street trees and the street trees are just a constant and um, and they cover up some buildings. So there's no sense in me figuring out and articulating the buildings when they're going to be just covered up by a street tree or any other kind of tree. Now, as we start to articulate the architecture, we need to think of character and scale. And uh, in this case, this is an innovation district. So when I think innovation, I think of robots and drones and those kinds of things, but they're a little tiny to draw in our aerial here. So we need to think of some other things and some things that come to mind are um, renewable energy. So solar panels and maybe some rooftop gardens, green roofs type types of things, um, stormwater management. So we want to make sure that we include those things. Um, in Innovation District, we're going to have newer, more modern buildings. So lots of glass and, um, you know, maybe some metal and glass. So we just want to make sure that those ideas and that character comes through in our drawing. And you want to kind of talk to yourself as you're drawing this thing. So right now I'm thinking that this is an entrance and it'll be like a little glass corner box with a metal awning kind of wrapping around and it'll be a little bit uh, lower in scale from the other main body of the building. And um, that can come up and we're going to draw that across. Maybe we have some large glassy window bays with some more awnings to, you know, make a better shadier pedestrian experience across there. And um, we're just going to talk our way through this drawing and really just, um, you know, I'm adding some lines to denote the floor heights of the building so that you get a sense of scale when you're looking at the drawing. And you're just going to continue your way through this drawing. Um, let's do our little rooftop greenhouse kind of thing here. That will say that will say innovation and sustainability and those types of things that we just want to um, really key in on and make sure that they're sprinkled on sprinkled in throughout the drawing. Um, and we want to just break the massing down a little bit. We're not drawing exactly what we modeled in SketchUp because then why wouldn't we just use a SketchUp model? So we really just want to, we're taking the model and manipulating and being a little bit creative to 
make this look like a real drawing in a real place. Moving on to the final drawing, we just want to make sure that we're choosing the correct pen or pencil and the appropriate line weight for the drawing. I'm going to start drawing the final in a similar fashion to what we were doing in the prelim. So I'm going to start with the trees and I just have a little more stroke to them and I'm adding a little shadow underneath. Uh, as you can see, I'm changing the line weight and giving the pavement a little more character to just to note the importance of that crosswalk. And I'm going to use my preliminary drawing as just a guy underneath. And I'm going to follow similar volumes, but I'm, I'm going to add a little more detail in there. And I'm using the perspective guide to draw my straight lines and anything that's out of the perspective grid, I will use a ruler for. But all the straight lines are kind of used for anything that's static construction. And the looser freehand lines are used for the more natural forms like trees. And this is more apparent in eye levels when you're drawing more people and things like that. But uh, in the aerial, it just gives a nice contrast of lines. So you know what you're looking at as building and what is trees. And the overlap of the line just gives the drawing some, some character. So I'm just being loose and enjoying the drawing process. Once we have our final drawing, we can choose to render it in any number of ways. Uh, in this case, we're going to take a grayscale marker and apply a little bit of tone and value to the trees, to the grass, and maybe a little bit to the shade sides of the buildings to give it a little turn. And uh, that's going to be it for our drawing. I made a new layer at the top of the stack and the blending mode is set to multiply. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going back in with the same pen and adding some darks back into the window. And I want to maintain the window rhythm, the mullions that I had drawn in, and I'm kind of adding these darks in around those, but uh, I'm just showing a little bit of depth and shadow, and it just adds a little contrast, and I really think that it, it punches the drawing quite a bit. And I'm going to use the marker tool and just choose a, a medium gray, and I'm just going to brush in lightly over the trees just to add a nice even value. And I will add some into the shade sides of the buildings and the grass and some of the glass. Just that all helps set the different forms apart from one another. So that's a wrap. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. You can find me at zanettaillustration.com or reach out through any other social media platform. I'm happy to share information that I've learned in my illustration career with any of those who are interested. So please reach out. Um, good luck and keep drawing.